Hi, I'm Alex Froger. I work in Jim Hall Lab in um, the Department of Physiology and Biophysics at the University of California, Irvine. And today I'm going to show you how to transform electrically competent E. coli by the method of heat shock. So today I'm using this technique to transform E. coli with my ligation product because I'm doing um, a probe to do some whole mount hybridization in zebrafish. Okay, so we are going to start to do the transformation. So first you need to have your um, water bath or dry bath at 42 degrees. You need to have your bacteria that you just took out of the main city in ice. Today we use the electrocompetent cells from Gelantis and also your DNA in ice. Also, you need a tube of um, SOC media at room temperature or 37 and your plates of LB plus antibiotic media. So now I'm going to add the DNA with the bacteria. So I work uh, next to the flame to not contaminate the bacteria. So I add the um, ligation with the bacteria, 50 microliter of bacteria and then immediately back in the ice. You can uh, flick it a little to mix the bacteria and your DNA and you leave for uh, up to 15 minutes in ice. So now 15 minutes have passed and we are ready to do the heat shock which is to put the bacteria at 42 degrees for 45 seconds. So I take the tubes out of ice and directly at 42 degrees, set start the timer, 45 seconds. And then I will put them back in ice very fast. And I put them out of 42 directly on ice. And then we wait for two minutes. So now I'm going to add the SOC media into the bacteria and put them at 37 for 30 minutes. So I bypass 500 microliter of the SOC media and I put it onto the bacteria and put them in my little makeshift chamber. So if you are going to use Ependorf tubes and a makeshift chamber for your incubator, make sure to put your Ependorf tubes horizontal because they will shake much better like that. So now we are ready to put the tubes in the shaker, so that's why we have this little chamber at 37 degrees for 30 minutes. So now we have finished the incubation at 37 degrees and we are going to plate the bacteria on uh, LB plus antibiotics. So in my case it's chlorophenicol. So I pipette 50 microliter of each sample and I put it on the plate. So with the remaining 500 microliter, you spin them down in a little tabletop centrifuge in order to pellet the bacteria. So after centrifugation, we get a nice pellet. And what we are going to do now is remove almost all the SOC media, just leave 50 microliter. And then we can plate these 50 microliter of concentrated bacteria. So I pipette approximately 450 microliter out. I just leave this much. So now I'm going to resuspend the pellet in the 50 microliter left of SOC media. And after that, I can plate this 50 microliter onto um, another plate. So I resuspend each pellet, then I puppet it. and I plate it. So there will be at the end two plates per sample. So now we have to spread the bacteria onto the LB plate. So um, I'm going to use some autoclaved glass beads, but you can also use a pipette pasta that you shape into a um, spreader like that. So I'm going to pour a few beads onto the Petri dish like that, 10-15 uh, 
So after you add the beads, you put all your plates in a pile like that and you gently shake them to have the beads spread the bacteria everywhere evenly on the plates. So I, I move the plates until they are um, dry. So which means that you should not see big streaks of liquid when you move with the beads. For example, in that plate, the beads tend to collapse together and you see a lot of streaks, it's wet. That one, the beads move freely, that one is dry. So now the plates are dry, so we can discard the beads. So I just go over the bowl like that. So you can recycle them. So now we are going to put the plates in the incubator at 37 overnight. And you put the plates upside down. After 12 hours of incubation at 37, we get the plate out of the incubator. And as we can see, we have fewer colonies in the plate where I plated 50 microliters than in the plate where I plated the rest. What is important when you transform bacteria is to have the right amount of colonies on your place, the right density. So in this place, you have very few colonies. But if you want more colonies, you can have the good example in this plate where it's exactly the right density, approximately 100 colonies per plate. This plate is a bad example because there is too much colonies and you cannot pick individual colonies. So I just showed you how to transform E. coli by heat shock transformation. So the um, very important aspect of this technique is to keep everything ice cold before the shock then 45 seconds, no more, at 42 degrees, back in ice, and then everything else has to be at room temperature or 37 degrees. So now I'm going to screen my colonies by PCR screening. So one of the points also is to um, have two plates. So one, we expect to have a lot of colonies and the other one less colonies. And what is important is to have your plates very dry with um, the use of beads or the pipette pasteur. Thanks for watching and good luck with your transformation.